Welcome to LCS Talks. I'm Berkeley Glazer, and I'm the principal of Langley Christian Middle School. I'm joined today with my co-host, Kevin merchant Danny. Kevin is our K-12 Director of Instruction here at our school. Kevin, what's going on today? Yeah, we are really excited to launch our fourth season on faith, identity, and social-emotional development. And to frame our season for our listeners, we are going to be unpacking our school theme passage from Mark 12, 28 to 34. And that reads, love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And we've been spending quite a bit of time over the course of the year in our classes and our staff learning, trying to unpack what that looks like as we model our lives and our community based on how Jesus lived and um, we're going to continue to look at Jesus's life and interactions in the gospel. We are really excited to explore what it means to be a resilient community. And uh, over the course of the season, we're going to be joined by our social emotional learning team. SEL is our acronym for that SEL team. And we're going to be uh, engaged in good conversations with them and uh, hear their perspectives and, and uh, their insights. So looking forward to that. Yeah, awesome. I like to put a little A in the SEL because it just sounds mm. better because it becomes our SEAL team. That's right. And, you know, they're all on triage and helping us. And Yeah. Very tactical. Yeah. I actually just learned what uh, triage, I, I, I know the word what triage yeah. means. I know where it comes from and it's uh, Napoleonic. So it uh, it started with Napoleon uh, Bonaparte. And, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if, if our listeners are interested in that, look up triage, do a little bit of a history origin kind of awesome. etymology. No. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I appreciate that. For sure. Today at our at our table, we are joined with Dave McVitie. Dave is our therapeutic counselor here at the school. And we have Joyce Wang, who is the Director of Learning Support Services and Inclusive Education. And Joyce and Dave both have experience supporting our communities as we navigate learning around mental health. And I know Joyce has experience with compassionate learning systems. Dave might too. I don't know. Yeah. Well, say say hi. Say hi, Dave. Hey, I'm here. Glad to be back. back. Joyce, say hi. Hi. I'm glad to be part of this podcast awesome. today. Yeah, looking forward to it. So, yeah, we're looking forward to framing the season ahead, hearing about Joyce's insights for how we can be a community that works towards the faith, identity, and social-emotional formation of our learners. Joyce, let's start with you here. Please help our listeners get to know you a little bit. What's your God story? Well, Kevin, how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I'll just start by saying that um, as I grew up, I had um, an absentee father who wasn't a part of my life. Um, so um, growing up as a child, I experienced God as one that was absent and not present for me. Um, a belief that he was present for other people, but distant for me. And it was um, through my time in England and through my community there, I experienced transformation and understanding of, of the nature of God and a revelation of God to myself um, as an Abba father mm. and a heavenly daddy, somebody who actually cared deeply for me and loved me and was present and ever faithful. And um, one of the scriptures from Isaiah 54, 10, when the Isaiah speaks about the mountains may be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken. And mm. so that love, the hesed translation in the Hebrew um, of God's steadfast love and unfailing kindness became something of a deep hope and a reality and a truth for myself. Mm. Thanks, Joyce. So uh, what brought you here and what's your story of how God brought you to the LCS community and uh, just maybe highlight a few things and on that, uh, that journey where you landed up here at LCS? At some point when I was in high school, I realized that I wanted to be a teacher. I always found school to be a safe place and a safe haven. Um, and I wanted to become a teacher and provide a safe place for students as well. Um, so I became a teacher. I've worked in the Catholic system, worked in abroad in Japan, in Costa Rica, in England. And I came back full circle to returning to Vancouver. Worked in the public sector and the private sectors and independent schools inner city, um, the whole works, K to 12. Um, I, my last job was at Richmond Christian School. And uh, when I saw this position for director of learning sports services, um, my heart, my spirit just leapt. And I thought, oh, this is a new goal and a new um, trajectory in my path. And so I, yeah, brought my family here. And here I am at LCS. Awesome, awesome. 
All right. Uh, question to both <coughs> Joyce and Dave. And Joyce, you can go first. Why is social emotional development important to us as a Christian community that is focused on spiritual formation? Right. Good question, Berkeley. So if we look at the five um, areas of the SEL, social emotional learning, we see there's self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision making. And if we look at all of those under the umbrella of uh, spiritual formation, the importance of um, knowing our identity in Christ, um, knowing who we are, knowing God in relationship with ourselves and with others, and um, help in that helping us to make ethically informed decisions and serving God in the, the global community and serving in um, stewardship of his creation as well. Yeah, I think uh, I hear that question, and I think about how God created us with, with a whole being. We've got all the elements. So just educationally, and, and head knowledge is great and important, but the whole part of who we are is kind of what spiritual formation is. So we have to, we have to be developing ourselves social, emotionally, mm-hmm. Um, we can't ignore a, a major part of who God made humans to be. So the the holistic approach um, of developing the spirit through spiritual formation in our Christian community is sort of what defines us as Christian community. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if we're not careful, uh, I mean, kids need social emotional development awareness in order to receive. Mm-hmm. They can't learn unless they feel safe if they don't know what's happening in their body and their emotions, which God has given them, mm-hmm. they can't respond to the world around them and they can't learn. Mm. Yeah, I think a big part of our school's <clears throat> vision revolves around these ideas of connecting, of thriving, and of equipping. And when I think of connecting, I think of the the types of relationships that we have. What are what are they characterized by? How how do how do we interact with one another? Um, when I think of thriving, I think for sure of mental health and our holistic well-being. And we use words in Christian education of holistic, or we use transformation. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, big jargon that we use, and I think that's really getting at that whole person, like you're suggesting there, Dave, um, being renewed in Christ. And then this equipping piece of like, what are the skills? What are the practices and strategies that we engage with to be well and to be whole in Christ? Um, so I, I think our vision gives us a bit of a perspective as well, too. And so I'm, I'm really excited um, that we have a season ahead to unpack some of these different things. And, and Joyce and, and uh, Dave, your perspectives framing this season for us, I think, are, are really important. So it would be awesome to hear about some of the work that you've done, Joyce, um, in your work with our staff, with our elementary and our middle school teams. And um, we, uh, as our our listeners might know, our Friday mornings are professional learning community times. We uh, take time to develop our staff community and to grow in our educational practice. And so we, in uh, in the fall time, so from September to December, we spent some time working on uh, social emotional development. And and, uh, Joyce, it'd be awesome to hear from you about some of the learning that you helped facilitate and lead with the elementary and middle school staff. So if you can walk us through that, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think the journey began um, last year in the recognition following um, COVID of um, where our students were at and where our staff was at in terms of the mental health and their social emotional wellness and well-being. Um, and wanting to recognize that we needed to support our students and our staff in that capacity in order for them to be in a place where they could learn um, academically and to be successful in growing and learning in those areas. So in that, rec- in, within that vein, we um, looked at resources um, from a variety of sources, um, research-based and evidence-based um, resources to help facilitate our learning with staff. Um, And then we took our staff through those resources and they were able to work in collaborative teams in order to research, um, plan, implement, and develop um, how they can introduce social emotional learning into their classroom spaces, into the spaces of our community and schools. Um, And Dave was a big Mm -hmm. focal point in helping to bring some strategies and tools as well. And he led off um, our staff training. Um, Did you want to speak to that a bit, Dave? Echoing what you said, we did see like a spike, and we have seen a spike of, of need. Uh, looks like behavior sometimes. Other times it's, uh, you know, just those suicide ideation or different social-emotional needs that existed that teachers weren't entirely feeling equipped to navigate. And so that's 
a lot of where this stuff came from. Let's equip us more as a team to be able to help kids get to a place of learning more effectively. So my role um, tended to be just giving them an experience to start their mornings um, of what it could be like to ground themselves, to focus their hearts and minds on, um, on how they were, as well as a spiritual angle too. How do we draw ourselves and our attention to God in this moment as we breathe deeply, as we settle into what we're bringing into the room, and then hopefully they could take those tools and utilize them in their classrooms. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So Joyce, if you can walk us through some of the topics that you covered and looked at um, in the, the Friday PLCs and give us a bit of a picture of some of the learning that staff engaged with. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the topics focus on um, how to understand our emotions, how to understand our feelings, and how do we navigate um, our experiences and what we're feeling, um, not pushing them down, but being present to that and responding. How do we understand the perspective of other students? Um, and how do we respond to understanding and accepting how others um, are experiencing the world or the classroom and their experience and their learning? Um, how can we work through um, restorative justice practices when we find mm-hmm. conflict with other students, whether that be on the soccer field or in our relation relationships um, and friendship circles? That's awesome. Yeah. What uh, at the end of the the PLC time or professional learning community time, uh, what were some of the highlights from staff? What did they learn? What did they share with you in terms of the things that really impacted their teaching practice? Mm-hmm. I think some of the biggest um, takeaways has been uh, the richness in which we're developing a more compassionate community of learners where teachers understand themselves better and how they come to their own journey and their own trauma and their own situations and how they respond to students and understanding how students themselves are coming as learners um, and that a a lot of students nowadays also have a lot of things going on internally and at home with themselves. Um, and understanding that where they come and how to meet them in their need with compassion and then taking them forward in their learning journey as a result. And I've been really impressed with um, the strategies and tools and the eagerness with which uh, teachers have implemented some of their their learning. Um, and the, the biggest joy, I think, is in having received some of those um, evidence of student growth um, and the sharing that a whole variety of staff, um, teachers, EAs, youth care workers, counselors, um, principals have shared, and some of them being, um, you know, teachers at the elementary, ha- learning how to navigate those social situations and work through the conflict with students. Um, the youth care worker here at the middle campus talked about uh, working with another student on social dynamics and learning how to take her through perspective taking to understand mm-hmm. how to understand her peer and that was transformative in her social circle in being able to move ahead with uh, strong healthy relationships another teacher talked about how she was realizing that her students were not able to um, learn because they were just dysregulated so how could she respond to the stress and anxiety in the classroom and help to re-regulate students so that they can be a place to learn yeah, it was really neat seeing different tools, different approaches. They, they were thinking differently. They were um, really starting to pay attention to what they may be bringing into into the classroom every morning and, and just noticing their own state. And just the concept that you can't, you can't take someone somewhere you haven't been. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for teachers, just to recognize where are you and have you grounded yourself and have you just noticed what you're carrying with you today enough that you can do the same for the students that are here and how Mm. different tools and uh, practices and books could be used different grade levels to help everyone kind of be more aware of of their state of heart and mind Mm -hmm. yeah it was great to uh just see that especially on that last day when we had uh, teachers share uh, Mm -hmm. their learning they brought an artifact Mm -hmm. to the group and presented it and just to see the variety uh, and just the depth of inclusion of what they're doing in the classroom was just amazing to Mm -hmm. see it was awesome. <laughs> what can you encourage our parent community with as it pertains to the importance of faith, identity, and social emotional development? Dave, we'll let you lead this one. Well, uh, when I think of the parent community, so often, um, so I used to be a youth pastor, and so often parents will send your kids to something and hope that that takes care of them. 
yes, you trust your school community to navigate things and to, to teach your kids knowledge. Um, but first, I mean, do you even know that we're working with them to, to develop self-awareness and social emotional skills? Um, but that isn't just for us. We only get them for a certain number of hours a day, number of weeks a year. That needs to be fostered and facilitated mm-hmm. by you at home. And I am a counselor, and with my kids, I regularly drop my guard and turn off my counselor button, mm. um, which I'm not saying that because I'm proud of it. I'm saying it because I, t- I turn myself off. Sometimes I'm not aware of how my kids are doing or what I'm bringing home with me mm. instead of into the classroom and, and how that impacts my family and my kids. And to be aware myself as a parent will help my kids navigate themselves, their future, their interactions day to day, help uh, solidify their identity and sense of self as they begin Mm -hmm. to be aware of what's going on inside and not reject it, Mm -hmm. not feel like there's something wrong um, with what's, what they're feeling. And so we, well, my wife and I I think uh, in a few weeks here are going to do a a full day parenting seminar Mm -hmm. um, that's going to it's like a workshop on a Saturday that walks parents through the process of becoming aware for yourself and for the sake of your kids and deeply validating and empathizing with what's going on to help them in whatever comes their way to, to add to your skill set so that you can add to the skill set of your children awareness and sense of identity that they have to find in other sources if you don't provide it. Mm. Mm. That's well said, Dave. I, I concur with that. Um, When schools and families form authentic partnerships, they can build strong connections and reinforce student social and emotional development. And the research suggests that when evidence-based social emotional learning programs are more effective when they extend into the home. And the families and caregivers are the children's first teachers. They bring their expertise of their children's development, experiences, culture, and learning needs. And these insights and perspectives are critical to informing, supporting, and sustaining the social emotional learning efforts. Mm. I think what uh, I go back to as we think about and anticipate some of the learning that we're going to engage with over the next uh, number of weeks as we um, record some of these episodes with different members of our SEL team is the those moments in the gospel, those little interludes where Jesus is looking spot on at different people in the gospels of those those uh, that image of Jesus looked at them and he was filled with love or Jesus looked at them with love. And that's kind of the posture that I would invite our community to be taking as we explore what does it mean to, to love our children? Mm -hmm. Um, What does it mean to have deep compassion and how do we do that to then also equip them in a way that is responsive, that they can share that compassion with others, that they're, they're shaped by it. And then they, in turn, lead and, and guide others. And that's the kind of community I think as we navigate um, different things going on that come up um, week after week and the the hurt and, and the brokenness and the, the challenges, but there's also some beautiful um, healing that takes place, I think, when we experience God's love and, and compassion too. And so we I think as I think about Jesus and as we will start to unpack over the next a uh, number of weeks, as I think of him with that deep compassion, um, what does that look like to be a community that also grows um, as a, a resilient community, one that recognizes the the hurt and, and one that actually responds and is equipped to engage in those issues too. So um, we'd love to just you know, open the floor again one more time. Um, any insights or wisdom, last uh, thoughts to share with our community to encourage them in this journey of working with their, their children through the social emotional development, but also through the faith and identity formation of, of these children. Well, mm-hmm. you brought Jesus in. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jesus had emotions. He gave us, God created us with emotions. He expressed emotion where he, and often saw them with deep compassion and deep love. He saw past the surface of what was happening. Mm. Uh, he asked deep questions so that they could know, we could know what's going on below the surface of our actions and our questions and what's actually happening inside. That is SEL. Hmm. What is below the surface? What's going on? What are you carrying with you today? Who are you? These are all monstrously important questions that Jesus asked mm-hmm. the people he interacted with on a day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. 
and we ask that of ourselves. We reflect on that for ourselves, and we offer it to students. Um, we don't need to neglect or shove down or pretend any part of us doesn't exist, especially the social emotional world. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I return to that idea of the Hesed, um, God's loving kindness and unfailing love, and how when we move in relationship and are closer to Him, we move into a place of, of longing and loving for ourselves and more understanding for the other and compassion, as Dave has mentioned. Mm. In relationship with our triune father and community with others um, and a strong identity that's shaped in Christ. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Man, we thank uh, both of you for being here today and just uh, kick-starting our new season and uh, whetting our appetite for things to come. we uh looking forward to uh, diving more into the topics and uh, meeting with other people uh, as we have them on the podcast. And uh, we just want to remind our listeners that uh, we do want to be interactive. We want to hear what you have to say and think. And you can reach out to us at our email, podcast at langleychristian.com. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. And thanks for listening. Thanks.